Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel Brings Joy Homeschool. I am Farida Baksamusa. I am a homeschool mom of two girls in California. I am a geologist by profession and I currently work as a part-time high school Waldorf geology teacher and a geology uh, professor at a community college here. So welcome to my page. Thanks for stopping by and if uh, videos on homeschooling, parenting, uh, learning, education uh, speaks to you, then please uh, think about subscribing to my channel by clicking the red subscribe button next to my channel name. So uh, with that said, let's move on to today's video. Today's video is requested by a friend of mine who lives in a UK and homeschools her four children. And she said that she has some good idea about rocks but, but would love for a geologist to make a video on how uh, to teach rocks and minerals to young kids. So uh, she requested me to make a video and I loved the idea and I thought I could share my knowledge and bring my geology uh, knowledge and my homeschooling knowledge, put them together and tell you how to teach children about rocks, about the earth and geology. Uh, so let's get started with a basic video where I am going to teach you all how I uh, teach this beautiful subject about the earth, earth science to my young kids. And then I'm going to show you some of the books that I really love about rocks and minerals. And then I'm going to show you my little rock and mineral collection. So let's get started. So first of all, um, what I absolutely love about geology and that's why I chose it is because it's such an outdoor subject. I always love to climb rocks, I love to climb mountains, I love to be outdoor and that's why I chose uh, to be a geologist and make that my profession. I love to teach it to my students and we go for a lot of field trips and that's what I do with my girls. We go hiking a lot and the first thing we, I tell them to do is look at the rocks around you look at the different colors of the rocks around you and uh, tell me what you think happened here these rocks were formed here thousands and thousands of years ago can you make up a story and tell me what could have caused these beautiful huge rocks to come where uh, you see them currently and they would come up with use their imaginations which i love in homeschooling they would um think about oh maybe it, it was a, it fell from outer space or maybe uh, there was a crack and the earth just opened up and a rock came out and uh it was different scenarios and turns out some of them would even be correct answers so that's a great way to introduce geology to your kids when you're outdoor. Tell them to observe, tell them to sometimes draw what they see, the different colors of the rocks, tell them to pick up the color, look at it under uh, a hand lens and see what they see in it. Do they see some uh, sparks of different colors in a rock? Do they see different layers in a rock? Uh, do they find the texture very sandy? So that's something that I'd obviously tell you all to begin with to uh, start to have this love for rocks and then study it. So then you could get um, your kids to open a few books and then you could teach them about the different rocks and what are the types of rocks and how do minerals make up rocks and how do they come where you see it uh, at present. So first thing is go outdoor and observe, draw what you see, collect those rocks, get them home, uh, get your hands dirty and uh, observe and then draw your observations or write your observations uh, that's something I do it with my students as well not only just, just not just with my kids I tell them here's our field trip and what do you think what do you think these rocks are and then from their knowledge about rocks they would guess whether it is a one particular type of rock or the other then uh, next is uh, I would try to uh, tell you all I'm sure you've heard words like minerals and rocks Right? Sometimes uh, people say, oh, this rock is a mineral, or that mineral is a rock. But what's important is to know the difference. A mineral is a naturally occurring crystalline solid that has a particular specific chemical composition. When I say naturally occurring, it needs to be occurring formed in the nature. It cannot be synthetic, not something that's formed in the lab. 
also when I say it, it's organic, for example, solid halite, salt, that's formed naturally, it's organic, solid. And then it has a particular crystallized structure. It has its particular atom arrangement that repeats itself, and that's the crystalline structure. So it's naturally occurring, it's a solid, it has a crystalline structure, and it's uh, inorganic, it's like salt. Uh, so that's the definition of what a mineral is. Now rocks. A rock is made up of several minerals. So a rock has minerals, but a mineral will not have rocks. So rock is an aggregate of different minerals. A rock could be made up of one mineral, or it could be made up of many minerals. So when you go out there and look at a rock and you see different colors inside that rock, that's probably the different minerals that make up a rock when it's formed. The next thing uh, that I want you all to know is uh, there are thousands and thousands of minerals in the world and they make so many different types of rocks. But rocks, which I'm sure most of you all might know, are classified into three major types. And let's get started. The first one is igneous rocks. In igneous rocks, uh, come, the word uh, comes from ignite, which is fire. And igneous rocks uh, if you've heard about volcanoes, it's formed when a volcano erupts, either inside the surface of the earth, that's under or below the surface of the earth, or above the surface of the earth. And when these volcanic rocks, which is very, very liquid, molten, when they come out, and when they melt, they solidify to form an igneous rock. So if you've been uh, to Yosemite, You'd see granites, and that's a rock, that's an igneous rock that's formed below the surface of the earth, but because of the earth's tectonism, it has come above the surface of the earth. So that's an example of an igneous rock, granite. In Hawaii, you'll see black lava flowing on the surface, and that is basalt. Again, there are thousands of different types of igneous rocks. So rocks that are formed inside the surface of the earth are called intrusive igneous rocks, uh, inside intrusive and rocks that are formed above the surface of uh, the earth they're called extrusive exterior extrusive igneous rocks simple right igneous rocks formed by uh, eruption of uh, volcanoes either inside or below the surface of the earth or above the surface of the earth now let's move on to the second type of rock and that is sedimentary rock and that comes from the word sediments that's particles uh, left from erosion and weathering of existing rocks that could be existing igneous rocks too for example let me talk about the grand canyon that's a canyon that has been made by the colorado river and when it uh, passed these existing rocks it eroded them and then deposited new rocks new sediments one above the other and that took millions of years to form so when you see these distinct layers in rocks and sandy texture, mostly brown rocks, those are sedimentary rocks. Those are formed by mostly uh, deposition by air, by water, by glaciers. And over a period of time, these layers deposited, they lithified, they solidified and formed these beautiful layers of what we see uh, now as sedimentary rocks. And uh, sandstone is one example, shale is one example. You also find a lot of fossils in these rocks. That's because when they were squished, like I, I, I talk about sandwiches, and when they squish, you have all these different layers of vegetables, and then they get squished between the layers. Uh, the imprints of the animal, the plant that remained there, was living at that time, was preserved. And that's why you see fossils, a lot of fossils. You see it in different rocks too, but majorly in sedimentary rocks. So that's important to know. If you see fossils, it's probably a sedimentary rock. So if you're going for a field trip and you see a rock with fossils, then you'll know, hey, I know, this is a sedimentary rock. And the third and the last type of rock is a metamorphic rock. And a metamorphic rock from the word morph, right? You've heard about metamorphosis or when a caterpillar turns to a butterfly. Similarly, uh, metamorphic rock is when existing igneous and sedimentary rocks, they metamorphose, they change to a different type of rock 
all together, which is a metamorphic rock. And then what changes it? What changes an igneous rock and a sedimentary rock to a different type of rock altogether? It is heat and pressure. These two conditions are very important. When, say, when there's tectonic activity and there's a lot of friction, there's heat developed, there's a lot of pressure when there's earthquakes, and when rocks get squished under a lot of pressure, they completely change and they form a new type of rock, which is a metamorphic rock. So let's recap on our three types of rocks. Igneous rocks formed by eruption of magma, volcanoes, sedimentary rocks, which is formed by sediments from either existing sedimentary igneous or metamorphic rocks, which were probably transported by wind, glaciers, water, deposited and then solidified and formed uh, a sedimentary rock. The cliffs that you see at a beach, they're sedimentary rocks. They were formed years ago under the seafloor. And the third type is metamorphic rock. When igneous, when existing igneous and sedimentary rocks morph, change to form a new type of rock. So say, uh, for example, marble. Marble is a metamorphic rock and it's formed from limestone, which is the parent rock. So, uh, that's a, a simple definition of three types of rocks and a definition of minerals. Remember, minerals make up rocks. Rocks have minerals, but minerals do not have rocks. Okay, now let's quickly move to the books that I recommend. And then I'll show you my little mini uh, mineral rock collection. Yay! Okay, so that is my uh, favorite. I have a lot of geology books or science books. But these are my favorite. Um, and then a little uh, rock mineral collection there. Uh, so this one is a very um, nice book for young kids, like for a kindergartner to uh, a first grader. It is by Discovery Kids. Uh, and it has a few pages. And it's pretty easy to re read. Uh, my kindergartner loves to read this book. And it's got basic earth information and topics like soil and rocks and uh, warm and cold places. And then it's got habitats and ecosystems so um, i recommend this book and it's got a little quiz that kids love to take and then a glossary which explains uh, the meaning of a few uh new words that they come across and it's got stickers too so that one i'll link it in the description box and then these are this is a lab book this is definitely for um high schoolers um uh, are very, these are famous authors ataba Klatkins, and pensk and they have um a textbook too i have the 11th version um and then of course this is my uh instructor copy that i get every time i'm teaching a course in college um and then uh this is another very famous book uh, earth portrait of a planet by stephen marshang um i have it's my copy and it's got what geology is of course it's much more in detail so parents could read through this and i'm sure your libraries would have it too uh so this author i'm going to link uh these authors and their books this if your kids or you are into rocks and minerals this is a wonderful book to have it is by john Ferdon, and it's a complete guide to rocks and minerals and it's got beautiful pictures and it teaches you what a mineral is what are the thousand different types of minerals and mountain building and of course it walks you through igneous rocks and how they form and how sedimentary rocks formed and uh, which are the famous um places that you see beautiful um sedimentary structures and then metamorphic rocks, how were they formed? And then talking about landscapes. And then it walks you through the different types of minerals and what are their mineral properties. How do we identify them? And then all um, the different types of uh, minerals and rocks. So it comes with a picture, a little description and identification. So this is a wonderful uh, book to have. It also talks about gemstones. Um, like I said, and descriptive properties, different groups of minerals. So yeah, it's a wonderful book, um, and it is one of my favorite uh, rocks and minerals, um, and how do we identify them? And beautiful pictures here. Yeah. And then these are my uh, keepsake minerals that I have. Uh, some I've collected, and some I've got from rocks and mineral shows. And then uh, I also have big chunks of rocks um, that are in my um, front yard and I just thought I'll show you uh, the ones that I love uh, and are tiny to show you Okay, uh, this is my mineral collection. This is a quartz. You see the hexagonal crystals here 
that's how it's naturally formed it's a quartz crystal called the hexagons that is a gypsum it's called rosettes and that's because it forms beautiful roses Look at that. It's, it's a gypsum that's another quartz you would not see the perfectly hexagonal crystals here a little bit they were formed and then they solidified that is it looks like gold right it's also called fool's gold but the actual name is pyrite cuprite you see these cubic crystals here beautiful gorgeous cubic crystals of these copper ores okay that's a hematite and iron ore that's a wonderful love this green color mineral it's a malachite it, 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 these features these circular features that you see it's very typical of a malachite oh my god this is beautiful this is um lazarite uh, so you love this and the gemstones of this look just so gorgeous i'm sure most of you must have guessed it this is an amber saps that is a tourmaline these features. that is um this is a natural mineral too it is an agate chalcedony and that is an aventurine that i have it's beautiful green mineral So these are some of the minerals uh, that I have currently. That's amethyst there, a geode. You see this beautiful quartz crystal. It's an amethyst, purple quartz, another mineral. And then I have, I've just gotten a few rocks that I want to show you since I spoke about the three different types of rocks. Um, this is a, a very particular type of metamorphic rock. It's got alternate layers of uh, darker uh, felspars and lighter silicas and when you see these black and white alternating layers it's definitely characteristic of a nice g-n-e-i-s-s -S, nice that's a metamorphic rock that's a basalt igneous rock basalt too and it's filled with these or vesicles were filled with secondary minerals that's a metamorphic rock a schist and that's the sandstone that it's very grainy and it's a sedimentary rock yes i hope you enjoyed today's video where uh, i taught you all the basics of rocks and minerals and introduced you to my rock collection and the books some of the best books that i absolutely love so if you enjoyed today's channel let me know if your kids uh, found this valuable and i'll see you all next time